Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's good to have you in God's house today as we worship the birth uh, our Savior and uh, remember his birth. I'd also like to welcome all the, the guests and visitors and family members of our uh, of members of our church who are here today. Thank you for coming. It's, it's really good to have you here. And all those uh, who have been getting sick and who've had to stay home, um, I, uh, I'm praying for your well-being, and uh, thanks for joining us online. Just a few notes before we begin today. It's a, a fairly normal service, uh, service, but there will be uh, a couple of things that are different. If you're new here, you can follow along on uh, the walls on either side of me or on those service folders uh, that have been handed out. Uh, there'll be some sections of the service where we speak or sing responsibly. And in those cases, uh, what is in bold type is what you say. And then uh, if you haven't already grabbed a, uh, a little candle uh, as you walked in, there are little baskets of them um, in both of the entryways to get into the, the sanctuary. So uh, if you don't have a candy, uh, candle yet, please grab one of those back there. And you can return it to one of those baskets once the service is finished. We'll be lighting the candles uh, during the final song. Let's begin our worship, and uh, with our first hymn, we'll come all you faithful. <laughs>
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll sing the Lord of mercy in response to you. Church of God and 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, who made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light, grant that as we have known on earth the wonder of that light, we may also behold him in all his glory in the light to come. For your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from the book of Micah, chapter 5, 2 to 5, fifth words. The prophets foretold that out of a little town called Bethlehem would come the Savior who would bring peace to the world. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. At this point, I'd like to invite the, the young children to come forward. They can uh, just come up here to the, to the first step. Thank you. Are you over here? Could you uh, could you come over this way, uh, away from the candles? Shift over a little bit, please. Thanks for coming up, everybody. Merry Christmas, Jackson. When is your birthday? Who else knows her birthday? What's your birthday? You know, do you remember? <laughs> yeah. Birthdays are an exciting time. Who else? Who, who, who knows their birthday? Who can tell us about it? <coughs> December 2nd. Awesome. You had your birthday this month. Yeah. Today, during Christmas time, we celebrate the birth of someone very special. Do you know who that is? Who? <laughs> we got Grandma Rebecca here. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, now, uh, Christmas is the celebration. It's the birthday celebration for Jesus. You, uh, just want to make sure the candles are safe here. Thanks. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the story of how Jesus was born today to remember and celebrate his birthday. I got a little picture here. You can imagine that's the little baby Jesus. What is he in? He's in a little manger. Yeah, it's a, that's a, a cow's feeding trough. It's like what you, you put cow's food in there and they eat it. Do you know why Jesus was in there? Why was little baby Jesus in a, in a, in a manger? He was born, yeah, he was born there, yeah. Uh, when Jesus was born, his parents, Joseph and Mary, were, they were traveling. 
and they had come to a hotel called Bethlehem, and there weren't any hotel rooms available. All the hotel rooms were full. So all that was left for shelter was this stable, or maybe today you could call it a barn, where animals were staying. And so that's where Jesus was born, in this stable. And they used a little manger, a cow's feeding trough, for a bed for little baby Jesus. That's pretty crazy. That's how God chose to send his son into the world to save us. He sent, uh, he sent his son here, um, and his son humbled himself to be born as one of us to save us. Pretty amazing. Just like we do at uh, your birthdays, how about we sing happy birthday to Jesus today? Would you do that with me? And anybody else wants to join in, you can do that too. Let's, let's sing happy birthday to Jesus. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Well done. Jesus heard that. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for sending us your Son, our Savior, Jesus, who came to take away our sins. In your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for coming up. Let me go back to your seats. Our second reading today is from the book of Titus, chapter 2. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from the wickedness, to purify for himself the people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand as we honor the gospel. We'll all speak the verse of the day together from the chapter. Hallelujah. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Hallelujah. We now have our gospel reading. Most glory this month, this evening, is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 1 to 20, and is going to serve as the base for the sermon for this evening. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a censor should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first censor that took place while Aquarius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him. I was expecting a child. Why did we hear there? The time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, the son. She wrapped him in a cloth and placed him in a manger, 
because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. I will cause great joy, that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior is born, has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in a cloth, a lie in the manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly beings <coughs> appeared with the angel. Praise God, say, Glory to God in the, in the highest heaven, and of earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Where the angels have left them and gone into hell, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see these things that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried up and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they have seen him, they spread the goods, they spread the word concerning what they have been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all those things and paddled them in her heart. The shepherd returned and glorified and praised God for all the things they have heard, they have heard and seen, which were just as they have been told. The gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. may be seated for the hymn of the day. Welcome everyone again. Merry Christmas. 
really good to be here with you. Before we ponder some more of the birth of our Savior, I'd like you to imagine the birth of your personal hero. I'm not sure who your, your heroes are. Maybe it's your dad or your mom or another family member. Maybe your hero is someone famous, like a, a sports star, or a great humanitarian, or a, maybe even a politician. Imagine for a moment a newborn Nelson Mandela, or Mother Teresa, or even a newborn Wayne Gretzky. When they were infants, no one knew who they were going to be. No one knew that they would grow up to be those great people. When their parents looked down on them, imagine mom looking down on sleeping Teresa, newborn Wayne, tiny Nelson. What they saw is just a helpless little baby who needs a lot of love. Eventually, those, those great people grew up and they became role models for many people, maybe even some of you. And the world needs that. The world needs that, right? We need leaders who inspire, uh, coaches who can lay out uh, a good path for life, mentors. But the world needs something else, too. The world needs a completely different kind of newborn. The newborn Jesus. Already, as we remember the newborn Jesus today, we can see that there's a major difference between him and all the other great figures in Earth's history. Yeah. Already at Jesus' birth, people knew more about him than anyone else knew about their child. Already, in the middle of the night, that first Christmas night, no. Jesus' parents knew what kind of man he was going to be, the good he was going to be pain he would suffer. It's possible they even knew how his life would end. <clears throat> right from the start, Jesus was different. No other newborn in history had a choir of angels announce his birth and tell of his significance to humanity. And the words of the angels are what we're going to focus on today. The evangelist Luke tells us about that night that Jesus was born. We heard Daniel read it just a few moments ago. It was in a small town called Bethlehem. And out of nowhere, an angel appeared to some of the shepherds who were keeping watch over their flocks just outside of town. And the angel said, first, do not be afraid, which was necessary because the shepherds had never seen angels before, and they were terrified. But the angel brought good news. I'll quote you what the angel said. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. We could paraphrase that. I think it I think it would be a savior is born to bring joy to the world. It'd be a paraphrase of the angel's message. A savior is born. Savior, that's a it's a heavy word. It actually says just as much about you and me as it does about this child, Jesus. 
As if the angel had said, a, a teacher has been born. A mentor has been born. And that would mean that we just need a little bit of help. We just need a, a good coach, a good mentor, a little inspiration, and we'll be all right. That's not what the angel said. The angel said, a savior has been born to you. Savior is a word that we use a lot in church. But in everyday life, how do we use that word? Do you need to be saved today? Are you choking? You need someone to come up behind you and give you a, a Heimlich maneuver? Who else needs to be saved? Orphan children, coma patients in hospital, injured hikers in Banff who need a, a helicopter evacuation. Those are people who need to be saved. If you need to be saved, that means you are totally helpless, lost, doomed, even. And that's actually how God the Father viewed us. Yeah, God viewed us lost, <laughs> helpless, doomed. That's what the scriptures tell us. That without Jesus, we are in spiritual emergency. We were all born into an impossibly difficult situation. We were born into a sinful world. And when I say sinful, I mean pain, evil, death, disease, perversion, divorce, war, jealousy, selfishness. We all get caught up in that. We were raised in it. And that's why we suffer from guilt. We know we've done wrong. That's why we feel shame. We know we're often not the good people that we should be. We fear that God is going to come down hard on us and punish. And he has every right to. God is holy and just, and we are not. Again, we were born into this sinful world, and we get caught up in it. We are sinful, and that means we have become a part of the problem with the world. No amount of coaching, or learning, or mentoring, or, or inspiration is going to fix our sinfulness and the debt that we have built up to God. There's nothing we can do to restore our relationship, let alone the world's relationship to God. God knew that. God knew that. And he loved the world. And that's why he put into place the ultimate rescue plan. And he sent us a Savior. That's Jesus. So how could this little baby Jesus save us all? What, what could one person do to save the world? Well, the angel who announced Jesus' birth explains that a little bit. He says, this, this child will be born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. That's what the angel said. This baby boy is the Lord, the Lord God. This is not an ordinary person. This is a miracle child. This Jesus is God born as a human being. He is the Son of God. And that means he has within him the unending love of God and the infinite power of God. And that means that he is completely capable of saving a world full of sinners. 
Earlier, I, I told you today that already at Jesus' birth, people knew more about him and his future than, than any other baby. And that's true because the angels announced his birth and told people who he was and what he would do. But it's also true because God had sent people throughout history to predict the life of this baby. God had sent prophets who had foretold what the Messiah Savior would do to save us. And what they said is that the Savior would be an atoning sacrifice to pay for the sins of the world. That he would undo the damage that sin had caused. And what was prophesied came true. This precious little baby Jesus, son of Mary, son of God, grew up and gave his innocent life as a sacrifice to pay for our sin. And then he died, nailed to a wooden cross. During that sacrifice, something amazing happened. Jesus, God's Son, and he has the power to do this, he was taking the sins of the world upon himself, and he was suffering the punishment for them. That means God the Father punished Jesus for our sin. And on the cross, Jesus actually felt the pain of hell. He did that, and he suffered that, so we would not have to suffer. So our sins could be paid for, so that people could be forgiven their sins against God. He died, and then three days later, he rose from the dead to prove he had done it. His sacrifice worked, and not only that, he has power over death, too. Jesus' sacrifice restored God's relationship to the world. That is how the Savior Jesus saves us. And the blessings of his sacrifice, the forgiveness of sin, life with God now and forever in heaven, those blessings are offered to everyone, everyone in the world, and they are received by faith. One of Jesus' disciples, a man named John, a man who witnessed Jesus' death and then Jesus alive again three days later, wrote in the book of John, chapter 3. It kind of summarizes the beauty of why God the Father sent his son Jesus into the world. He says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So this this is the most incredible act of love the world has ever seen. This Son of God was given completely for you. He was born to be your Savior. He died to be your Savior. Believe in Him. When you know this good news and you believe it, it does just what the angels said it would do. Cause great joy for all the people. It brings joy to the world, as we just sang. It brings joy to us. Think on the joy of God sending his son Jesus for you for just a moment. It means that your many sins are forgiven. It means that you are at peace with God. You have a good relationship with him. And that God values your service to him on this earth your service to other people through your work and your love. It means that we don't even have to fear death. Because whoever believes in the Savior shall not perish, but have eternal life. Because of the work of the Savior, Jesus' death is a doorway 
to life in heaven with God. That is the joy of God sending his son for you. You can see that joy in everyone who heard this news that first Christmas night. I'll reread just a little bit of the end of that story in Luke chapter 2 for you. See if you can see the, the joy in these people. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. You see the joy? The joy of Mary, who treasured up these things in her heart. The joy of the shepherds, who after having heard the angel, they ran to go find this baby. And when they were there, and after they had seen him, they shared this news with everyone they met and left them in amazement. And then the shepherds returned to their flocks in the field, glorifying and giving thanks to God. So we wrap up our, our meditation this evening. Maybe let's just focus on that last part. Of the shepherds return, glorifying and praising God. I think this, this often gets overlooked. It is so special. The shepherds return to their fields praising God. I don't know if you have met a shepherd before. You know what, what shepherding sheep is like. It's, it's a dirty job. It's a dirty, dangerous job because they're out there, outside in the elements, day and night, protecting their sheep from wild animals like wolves or bears or even lions. And it's not glorious work. And back in their time, uh, it didn't pay well either. They went back to work, glorifying God, giving thanks to him, full of joy. Right now, gathered in this room, Remember the birth of Jesus. We have our carols, and in a moment we'll have our candles. We're kind of like Mary, pondering these things in her heart. We're kind of like those shepherds who went to go see this baby Jesus. And how they were left in awe of him. But next week, or whenever your Christmas holiday ends, if you even have one, going to go back to work. And many of us are going back to dirty, dangerous jobs that aren't very glorious. We're going back to the daily grind. But like those shepherds, take this good news with you. May this good news of Jesus give you great joy that you go back to work glorifying God, praising him for sending you, your Savior. Go back to your life. Go back to your family, to your home, to your work. Be thankful that God has given you a rescuer, a Savior. We each needed Jesus. We needed him more than any other child that has grown up to make an impact on this world. And we admit that we still need him daily. As so we're born into this world that is at war with God. And 
get caught up in the many distractions and diseases and disasters unless we keep focus on the Savior. That's why I'm really thankful that you're here today. Thank you for being here, filling up on this joy that God wants you to have. That's why we meet here every week, learning more about how our Savior rescues us. And while we study his word and meditate on it, we take the time to let this joy sink deep into our hearts and into our identities. Because of Jesus, we are loved, we are forgiven, we are saved. This good news that causes great joy. Treasure it up. Ponder it. Sing about it. Encourage one another with it. In the name of the Messiah of Jesus, our Lord, the Savior. Amen. I invite you to please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayer of the church. For the prayer of the church today, we will do this responsibly. Gracious Father, when the time had fully come, you sent your Son to carry out your plan to save the world from the tyranny of sin, the threat of death, and the power of Satan. On this holy night, strengthen our faith as we ponder the depth of your divine love. Lead us to the body of and to remember your gracious compassion. Impress on us the poverty and pain your Son endured on our place. How he willingly set aside his power and place and assumed the weakness of an infant and the starkness of a stable. Lead us to acknowledge the sins which compelled his humiliation and the love which accepted his loneliness. Forgive us and move us to trust in his mission to save us. Take away our fears and fright and fill us with joy as we hear the message of Jesus who's born for us. That he came to restore peace with you and mend the bond broken by sin. Move us to sing our carols and hymns, not with passing pleasure, but with the depth of praise for his extraordinary love. Let our songs and hymns reflect our faith in the redemption gained by Christ. Lord, lead us to kneel at his manger with hearts of faith see there the God-man who takes away the sins of the world. Guide and guard us so that the happiness shared with family and friends does not delay or discourage our journey to his holy crib. Make the birth of Christ our highest priority and deepest pleasure. Fill us with an eager joy that moves us to share the good news with others, especially those who may have forgotten or dismiss the love of God in Christ. Give us faith-filled maturity to recognize that the best gift we can give to children is the story of Jesus who was born as a baby and died on the cross to save them for heaven. Move us to tell the good news we have seen and heard. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence.
during this hectic holiday. Provide us with quiet times to remember what the birth of Jesus really means for us and all for the world. You came to free us from the evil forces that separated us from your love. You lived and died to forgive our sins. And you rose in triumph to prepare a place where we will live with you forever. <coughs> Move us to sing with hearts of faith. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. We'll now gather the offering and just a few notes here. If you're a guest or a visitor with us today, please do not feel obligated. Offerings are what our members give to support the ministry here at the church. You can, uh, if you do have an offering that you wish to give, you may put it in one of these offering baskets that will be passed around. There's also an e-transfer option and the instructions for that are on the service folder. Also, in your service folders, you'll notice there's a little stay in touch connection card. And if you are a guest or visitor with us today, please uh, leave your name and a way to get back to me uh, so I can reach out to you and pray with you in the future and um, see if you need any other spiritual care. Thank you. There are pens, by the way, underneath the seats, some of the seats in front of you, if you wish to fill that out. Please stand once more for prayer. Blessed Lord, you've given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll begin lighting those candles if you don't have a candle for yourself yet and you'd like to have one, there are some in a basket in the back there, so you can go grab one now if you need. We'll have some ushers go down the center rows and uh, light the candles with people on the end of the row. And then what you do is just uh, light the candle with the person next to you. And then we'll give it, get everybody, uh, everybody's candle lit up that way. Thank you.
Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you again for coming. The candles that you're holding can be uh, put back in the baskets. Uh, there's a basket back there in, uh, in that back entrance. And I'll meet you there once once we're finished here. To I can greet you all. I'd love to do that. Also, if you are a visitor with us today and you've uh, filled out one of those little stay-in-touch sheets, uh, you can just hand those to me in the back when uh, when I shake your hand. Other announcements? We have Christmas, uh, Christmas worship tomorrow morning as well. That is a completely different worship service uh, from this one, and you're welcome to join us for that as well. If you're interested in learning more about Jesus, the Savior that God has sent into the world, uh, you're welcome to join me for a Bible study. I have various Bible studies going on throughout the week, and I'm pretty flexible in scheduling those. So if you are interested in learning more and pondering this, this great treasure of God's Son some more, uh, please reach out to me, and I'd love to make that happen. Thank you. Merry Christmas again. I'll see you at the back.